Shami Miraj, Prabhupada ki jai, Anant Koti, Vaishnavrinda ki jai, Nama Charja Siddhari Das Thakur ki jai, Prem Sakaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitalanda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Shadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinath Sham Kundradha Kundigiri Gavritan ki jai, Vrindavan Tham ki jai, Patip Tham ki jai, Jagannath Puri ki jai, Kangamai ki jai, Samanamai ki jai, Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the assembled today. All glories to the assembled today. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go Premanande. Have his calling as Jayadatta Swami Maharaj among with us. So, Hari Go. So, for uh, those of you who don't know uh, Maharaj, uh, Maharaj is the uh, direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada and uh, one of the very few people who uh, in very early disciples of Srila Prabhupada and uh, have been serving ISKCON and uh, the society by a um, lot of his uh, book editing work, as well as uh, he has authored many books. And uh, one of his uh, really famous books is uh, Vanity Karma. And uh, yes, so Maharaj is with us for uh, next few more days. So today, Today and uh, even Saturday and Sunday, Maharaj will be even giving his uh, association. So, and today's uh, discussion is uh, basically Q and A session. If you have any questions, any questions, burning questions or non-burning questions, uh, Maharaj would be very happy to answer those. Um, so, you know, I would encourage everyone to open up and ask as many questions as possible. So, to uh, Thank you very much. Oma Jnana Timiran Tasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Jina Tasmai Shri Gudave Shri Chaitanya Mano Gistam Stapitam Jaina Putave Monday on Shri Guru Shri Jatapatakamala, Shri Guru Vaishnavastra, Shri Rupam Shagrasatam, Shagana Raganatam Vitamastam, Sajiva, Sadvaitam Savatutam, Pradijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam. Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lodita Sri Vishakhan Vitamstra He Krishna Kuruna Sindho Deen Vandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Kanta 
सप्ताकांक्षन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावन देशी ऋषभ भनु सुते देवी प्रणमामि होरि प्रिय वंशा को पुत्रुभ्यस्त कृपा सिंधो देव च पतिता नाम पावने व्यो वैष्णवेव्यो नमो नमः श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत वेदांत श्री वास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम Well thank you all very much for coming those of you who are here and those who are online uh, as mentioned pretty much anything goes any questions that you might have feel uh, welcome to ask and is, is our audio okay you can you know, yeah. Masks are really great for steaming up your glasses. <laughs> okay. And I wonder what sort of questions we might have bubbling up. Yes. So, how seriously we should take our material life, for example? Our health, you know, you can take it with financial situation. How seriously should we take our material life? For example, our health, our financial situation. How much should we depend on Krishna, and how much we should use our material intelligence? How much should we depend on Krishna? And how much should we use our material intelligence? Yes. Well, we should take our life, the basics of our life, seriously. and as true the prophet said to the needful it's not that well krishna's the supreme personality of godhead so i don't need to eat any more i'll just depend on krishna that just neglect everything maybe the paramhansas can do that those who are on the highest level they'll just leave everything to krishna and they won't worry about they won't even give attention to eating they won't give but we can't imitate so we should do everything carefully responsibly with the idea that i'm doing this for krishna service uh, if you're going to maintain yourself financially and uh, physically for sense gratification better to die just just to spend waste your life on on sense gratification it is a useless waste of, of your human life but to use your your life for krishna consciousness is the real purpose and for that end you want to do everything attentively so you see to your finances you see to your health you see to eating you see to having a suitable place to live um, that's good but you don't want to what is that in the book in bhagavatam जीवस्य तत्व जिज्ञासन नार्तो यस्ते हो कामस्य कामस्य निंद्रिय प्रीति लाभो जीवे ते यावत द ह्यूमन लाइफ इज नॉट मेंट फॉर जस्ट इंक्रीसिंग आवर डिजायर्स एंड स्ट्रगलिंग टू सैटिस्फाई अ इंद्रिय प्रीति टू सिंपली परसुइंग व्हाट्स प्लीजिंग टू माय सेंसेस दैट्स व्हाट द एनिमल्स डू they're busy uh, trying to satisfy their senses so they do it crudely we do it with sophistication it's the same business so shukadev goshami says that's not the business of human life uh, jivasya tattva jigyasa human life is meant for inquiring about spiritual realization that's what the animals can't do they could do all the other stuff but they can ask you know they don't come here to find out about the science of krishna so that's the business of the human life on jivasya tattva jigyasa narto yasche akarmati so lavo jive te yavati ram sukadev goshami says as much as you need to keep body and soul together 
not that I, I build a big mansion for myself and say, well, that's, you know, a man has to live and so for Krishna consciousness and, uh, you know, the, the top luxury car and the most recent iPhone 200. And, you know, the, you don't, we, I don't need that. So what I need, let me attend to very properly. Uh, and then be done with it and get on with the real business. <laughs> Just like we, we came in a car, so the car has to have fuel, the car has to, the brakes have to work, the steering wheel has to work, but not that we obsess over the car. The point is to get here. So if we just spend our whole time car, 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 and we don't, don't arrive, then we wasted our time. So the body is a uh, yantra, it's a car. Bhagavad Gita, Yantra So we should see that the car is properly maintained, but not lose sight of the purpose to get to the destination. Jivas Yatattva to understand the science of Krishna. Is that okay? So we're chasing away a bug, that's not good. Maharaj, I was reading Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto. Second canto, second verse, verse two, and sorry, second chapter, verse eighteen says that the impersonal Brahma Jyoti is also called the Parampara. Is also called Parampara. Yeah, so impersonal Brahma Jyoti is also called Parampara. So it's Parampara, and Prabhupada says the the living entities who are in Brahma Jyoti also can fall down. Hmm. So how do you understand that if it is the race of coming from spiritual world, it's also spiritual. And whoever reaches spiritual world, they are not part of this also world. So mm -hmm. the then how do we explain how the living entities fall from this param padam? Huh? So first of all, we have to know what is param padam. What does it mean? Padam means place, and padam means the highest. So the Brahma Jyoti is also padam padam, and Brahma Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti means the effulgence of the spiritual. Well, that fills the spiritual world. Uh, it, it's identified with the impersonal feature of Lord Krishna. So, Brahmati Paramatmati Bhagavan Shatita. In the Bhagavatam, it said that there's only one absolute truth known in three features as the impersonal Brahma, the localized Paramatma, and Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. So since the absolute truth is one, the parampadam is one. The supreme destination is one. But because the absolute truth has different aspects, the parampadam has different aspects. The Brahma aspect, and finally the Goloka Vrindavan aspect, or the Vaikuntha aspect, the, the spiritual uh, planets. Hmm? So when in the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna says, he's speaking specifically about a madhama, madhama parama, his own abode, the place where he lives. So his living place is on the, is on the spiritual planets. And filling the, that atmosphere is the uh, Brahma Jyoti. The spiritual effulgence. So the spiritual planets are the real residents for the living entities. And the Brahma Jyoti, you can live in, you can live in, but you can't stay. It's difficult to stay there because it's not our, our natural position. The Brahma Jyoti, there's no service, there's no personal identity. There's no personality of Godhead manifest. And therefore it's not attractive ultimately to the living entity. It doesn't provide the, the full life that, that every living entity is looking for. Therefore, Rudyakrit's train of Param Padam Tataha, even after attaining that Param Padam after great difficulty, Patantyato, uh, one can still fall down. Why? Anadrita Yushmadagraya. Because of neglecting 
the lotus feet of the personality of God. So it is basically by choice the living entity will come down again because they are not satisfied in the. And by choice or by, you know, Prabhupada gives the example that you, we send these space probes up into uh, outer space. And either two things are going to happen. Um, it's going to, uh, well, it can, those space probes can float around, but if they, they'll, they, 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 they come in touch with the gravity of some planet and then they land there. Uh, either they fall back down to earth or they're attracted by some planet, but it's difficult for them to, to float on and on and on and on. So the, uh, or even the, we can live, for example, in, in the water for some time, but not very long. Finally, we go looking for the shore because we're creatures of the shore, not creatures of the water. So as living beings, we're meant to have a personal identity, personal activities, personal relationship with Krishna. So not finding that, we'll just fall down again. We'll just fall down again. Nothing to hold on to. Okay. Like those space probes that, you know, never, never reach the moon or never reach a planet they fall down again. Oh, let's see. Yes, is there another question? Yes. No, yes. Yeah. Um, see, based on one's karma, hmm. living entities go through different uh, sufferings or they enjoy the fruits of their actions. Yeah. Based on their karma, living entities suffer yeah. and enjoy the results of yes. their actions. And where is the jurisdiction of Yamaraj comes into picture? Because Yamaraj is also where does Yamaraj's jurisdiction come? His jurisdiction comes for the sinful living entities, for the sinful human beings. But they take birth in the uh, earthly planets to suffer their sinful reactions anyway, right? So mm -hmm. the, the living entities who are sinful, mm -hmm. they will be born on this earthly planet to suffer, meaning they may have. Some well, first of all, life. every living entity is sinful. Every living entity in the material world is sinful. Otherwise, without being sinful, we wouldn't be here. Just in the prison, everyone's a criminal. That's just a question of how, how serious a criminal is, but everyone's criminal. So we're all sinful because we've turned away from Krishna. That itself is you know, sinful or uh, a misuse of our consciousness, you could say. So we're all misusing our spiritual consciousness to turn toward matter. And therefore we're all suffering. Therefore we're all suffering. Now the living entities in the lower species of life, they don't go to Yamaraj because they never violate the rules for their species. You never see a tiger stealing oranges. <laughs> they always do exactly what they're supposed to do. So nothing wrong there. When you come to the human life, there are two ways to act, piously or sinfully. Piously means following the rules of nature or the laws of God. And sinfully means violating, transgressing, trying, overly trying to exploit the resources of the material nature and thereby uh, violating the laws. You know, like there's, uh, you can go into the bank and do your ATM transactions and conduct your business or you can try to break into the safe and get more. If you do that, you're a criminal. Hmm? And if you just do your ATM transaction, well, that's... So Yamaraj is in charge of, of course, we're all criminals, but you know, those who are the severe criminals who are breaking even the laws of this world, they go, they go to Yamaraj, the human beings who misuse their, uh, who violate the laws of nature grievously. They go to Yamaraj. Otherwise, the other living beings, the other living beings, the lower species, they don't go. And the human beings who don't violate grievously nature's laws, they don't go. Yes? How do you understand that a law is being violated? Because in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is fighting and killing his family, but it's mm. pious. It's pious. Uh, how do we understand 
that a law is being violated because in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, uh, Arjuna is killing his relatives and it's pious. Therefore, it said, Dharmam uh, hi shakshat Bhagavat pranitam. The karma or, or law is what's enunciated by the personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. So, where did, how does that happen? Well, in Kurukshetra, Bhagavan is right there next to Arjuna. He's telling him what to do. So there's no question of Arjuna doing anything uh, so the simple. Closer, so the closer you are to Krishna, the more you have an understanding of these laws. Yes, if you're directed personally by Krishna or by Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master, then you're acting uh, perfectly, perfectly uh, under Krishna's perfect direction. The Shastra, the Vedic literature, also represents Krishna. If you don't have a guy around, it's your internal Krishna consciousness, your guide. If we don't have a guide around, is our internal Krishna consciousness our guide? That means, of course, if we've connected with a, a proper guide, proper spiritual master, then the connection is eternal. He may be physically present, physically not present but he's always with us, as long as we remember the instructions. We haven't yet come to that stage. We haven't met a, a guide that we can uh, turn to. Then is our prompting from within. It's that, uh, it's unreliable. Because my heart tells me something. Now, is that God telling me, or is that my my whims, or my my desires, or my illusions telling me you know people have there was some serial murder case in, in america some years ago where uh, some madman was was killing people and he was getting like messages from his dog <laughs> you know, i should do this so people get from within they get all sorts of you know i, I should uh i should chase after my my best friend's wife, because uh, you know I'm getting that feeling from within. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> that's not Krishna's direction. So uh, there are three sources of knowledge about what to do. The, uh, of course, there's Krishna himself in person, as Arjun had him. Otherwise, the guru these bona fide spiritual master and the sadhus, the saintly devotees who are following the principles of Krishna consciousness and the Shastra, the, the Vedic literature, uh, which is coming from Krishna. So the, the Vedic literature, Shastra Pramana, Krishna says, uh, we should take the Shastra as our guide. But, and then, and therefore even Krishna is quoting Shastra to Arjuna. Quoting Vedic literature, uh, Brahma Sutra, Paraiz China, you know, different ways. Uh, but I lost my thought for a second. Uh, so, in following Shastra, we should be guided by the bona fide spiritual master. Can you see if there's another good mask in here? This one's really. Uh, in the no, I have this one, but see if there's one in here that's better than the one I need. This one's rather uh, clunky. Um, yes. Uh, th those are the same as what I've got. You can just take a look and see. Um, otherwise, we're only here for an hour and then so I'll make it. You don't see one. Okay, there's 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 another section to that that bag, not just the yeah. Uh, let's see what we've got. Oh, that one is primo. Thank you very much. We're scheduled for an upgrade. <laughs> Okay, this should be better. It will still fog my glasses, but we can't have everything. Thank you very much.
Well, now the chat box is busy. And if you could look in back in there, you'll find another glasses case, which has my reading glasses. This is quite far away. I think that's in the main section. Yes, thank you. Prabin says, okay, so he's 6.329 provides uh, further documentation of who, go, who comes to Yamaraj. Srimad Bhagavatam 6.329. Thank you to Prabin for that. Now, The living entity, Murari Gupta says, suffers for his sinful activities in the hellish planets, but there's a massive suffering on this planet also. Where is that from? Well, it's from us <laughs> in two ways. Uh, we bring suffering on ourselves by coming to this material world. That's the first thing. Reading lessons make everybody here look weird. <laughs> Just by turning away from the material, from Krishna, we, we put ourselves in suffering. When we step away from our, our natural position, we're stepping into a position where we're going to suffer. Uh, so that's the first thing. We bring suffering upon ourselves. And then we work conjointly to cause suffering to one another. So in that way, we suffer. You know, what is this environmental crisis? It's all sorts of human beings creating a mess for everybody else, for, for the other human beings and for the, the other species of life. Um, the, if the reports are correct that the coronavirus is of human manufacture, then that's another instance of human being causing problems for other human beings. Apart from that, there's the usual more prosaic ways of causing problems. You know, we, we get one another in traffic accidents, we divorce one another, well, we don't divorce one another. Either way, we cause trouble for, <laughs> for, for one another. So this is one of three kinds of, of miseries inherent in, in this world, from other living entities, from the environment, from nature, and from our own bodies and minds. So that uh, from, from the modes of material nature, the workings of the modes of material nature, there'll be uh, trouble, especially for the mode of passion. Raja says to Palam Dukkha, the more we increase passion, the more we increase suffering for ourselves and for others. We think that passion is great. In Kali Yuga, passion is considered to be outstanding because so many people are dull they're in ignorance, so passion, they make passion look good. But the real standard of, of human life is, is goodness. To be calm, quiet, peaceful, thoughtful uh, mode, uh, not the mode, I want more, achieve more, do more, get more, enjoy more, control more. That brings suffering. And of course, even goodness is not perfect. It also brings suffering in its own subtle ways. Uh, it binds us to a feeling, no, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm reading interesting books. I'm thinking about important things. I have a peaceful, natural way of life. And so let me come back again to this material world and live this way as a scientist, as a philosopher, as a um, what, have, what have you, you know. And, so, uh, therefore, Krishna says, this dragon one should get free from all the three modes of nature. That's the only way to put an end to all suffering. As living entities, this is Abhishek, are initially in touch with Krishna as his servant 
Why does fall down happen for a jiva of a living being? And can't it happen again after going back to Goloka Vrindavan? Or is this just beyond under the understanding of a conditioned soul? Well, Srila Prabhupada explains this in various ways. First of all, that we have eternal independence. And eternal independence means an eternal ability to misuse that independence. So that's the, the, the why, why fall down happens. It happens because we want to be independent. And Krishna says, if you come back, you won't fall. You won't fall. So then it finally becomes beyond our ability to understand because no one can understand when we first became conditioned, therefore we're called Nitya Bhatta, eternally conditioned souls. So uh, therefore Srila Prabhupada advised us to avoid uh, what's the word, beating our brains to try to figure out uh, how we got here, when we got here, and just go back. You know, you're in the water and someone extends you a rope and you say, well, wait a second, how did I get here? <laughs> you know, grab the rope and we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yes? Uh, I was wondering that uh, you always talk about that everybody has to be conscious. Everyone has to be Krishna conscious. That is one of our duties. That's our duties. Not one of our duties. That's our duty. Yes. <laughs> if everybody becomes Krishna conscious and leaves this planet forever, it goes to Krishna's world. If everyone leaves this planet and goes to Krishna's planet, because you want to be free from your karma, you know, detangled from it, isn't that uh, Krishna's own creation will be problem? Then wouldn't Krishna's own creation be in problems? Yes, because it has to be balanced. Always some some people believe there will be entanglement. His creation will be problem. Well, you just contradicted yourself. You said there'd always be someone back here, but and then you said, well, what if everyone I think Krishna left? does not want his creation to be a problem. The creation, balance. well, let's look at it in two ways. First of all, there's not much danger that everybody's going to go back to Godhead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's, as you say, always some who want to stick around and, you know, not miss the next act. Always some, some Always some fools who say, no, why should I go? <laughs> That's the first thing. Because you say that the lower, uh, lower kind of life, they will not suffer. They don't suffer because they don't break the wheel of creation. The, the animals, the birds. Yeah. So they they don't, not that they don't suffer. They're not sinful. Yeah, no, it's not that they don't suffer. You know, you see animals tearing other animals apart. Somebody's definitely suffering there. But they don't so they don't have to go to Yamaraj and be punished for violating their duties because they perform their duties. But as animals, they suffer, sure. Not that uh, this is great, you know, I'll escape from suffering by entering animal life. No, the animals suffer also. The so that's the first thing. And second thing is, well, if everybody left, wouldn't this Krishna's world fall apart. You know, this is the prison. If everybody, you know, was released from prison, everybody earned uh, freedom from prison. Well, that's not a problem for the government. What are we going to do? Everybody's left the prison. <laughs> but there's always some who insist, no, let me rob the bank. Let me, let me go to prison. Okay, let's see. Um, Lakshmi Moni has her hand up. Okay. Um, I don't see her, but. but okay. So um, wherever you are. Well, oh, I was. Are, yeah, here I am. Uh, yes. <laughs> there was some statement oh, made, which I've heard. Oops, I've heard billions of times before that, you know, there's three ways of knowing what to do. There's Guru Shastra and Sadhu. And of course, the spiritual master and, you know, you have uh advisors um and then you have your own good hopefully good 
uh, understanding of what's right and wrong and what should be done and what should not be done. Um, but sometimes it seems that those things are in conflict with each other. And it's almost simplistic to say that it's always going to be clear what should be done. I mean, we I'm sure you've heard, we've heard it before that Arjuna was sitting on the chariot with Krishna. So he didn't, you know, there was no lack of clarity who was going to give him the advice of what to do. But he was confused for 18 chapters and um, or 17 chapters. And um, it seems like there's a lot of confusion in, in the part of many as to what is the best course of action to move forward. And there's so many influences from what we know is not desirable. For instance, we've talked about Facebook and we've talked about you know, other things that influence us and we know it's not good, but it still influences us and collectively it influences us. And so doing the right thing sometimes becomes very difficult or maybe impossible. I don't know. That's my question is how do you know really uh, how to move forward? Sometimes it seems like it's almost impossible to know. How do we know which way to move forward? Sometimes it seems impossible. There's, there's guru, there's sadhu, there's shastra, but it seems that there may be, they may not always say the same thing. And Arjun was, even Arjun was confused for 17 chapters or so. <laughs> so how do we get things straight? And then there's so many other influences um, in the form of Facebook and, and so on. We've talked about that before. So how do we know what's right? Well, the first thing is uh, we know that we can, without loss to our spiritual welfare or integrity, log off Facebook. Uh, Guru Sadhu Shastra, but not Facebook. <laughs> if everyone would follow that sage-like advice, that would make life a lot easier. Life would be a lot easier, yes. Uh, life has not improved thanks to Facebook, sorry to say. Um, we use it, but we use it at our peril. It's, it's not designed for the welfare of human of, of humanity. When the board of directors or the, the stockholders of whoever owns Facebook meet, they don't, their first question isn't, what will be best for the welfare of humanity? Nor is any other first, second, third, fourth, fifth question there yeah, is. <laughs> unlikely to be discussed at all. So uh, we don't need, so we can set that aside to, to begin with. <coughs> but we have three, so we have three sources of knowledge, Sadhu, Guru, and Shastra, what to do uh, when they don't seem to be in agreement. And then we have our own intelligence, which with which we have to try to sort things out, or you know, find that we have to be the ones to, to accept whatever advice it's going to be. So how do we, how do we reconcile these things? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes, well, most of the time we hope, things are fairly clear. You know, we don't have to ask, is illicit sex okay or not okay? Is gambling okay or not okay? Meat eating, uh, intoxicants. We don't have to, you know, these are not like gray areas or or difficult points. And so many other things are, are very clear from Shastra um, or from the spiritual master's order. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. So this, this guides our life. Uh, but then you come to points that are more subtle. They may be less important or sometimes they may be important. Uh, some crucial question where we can't quite make out what, what am I supposed to do? So the, of course, the prophet said the main direction is Shastra. Krishna's direction is there in Shastra. And relative work presenting the Shastra is the spiritual master. And the sadhus or the devotees, they also are working from, from Shastra. Just as in the law court, the judge, the prosecuting attorney, the defense, the, the uh, prosecution, they're all working from the law. So the law books are the, the point of reference. The judge refers to the law, the attorneys on both sides 
refer to the law. So the law is, is finally, so Shastra, the, the book of law or the, the book that's, uh, yes, meant to direct us. So then uh, the Shastra, ideally we understand from the bona fide spiritual master. My spiritual master has told me to do this. Fine, and, end of story. Should I do this or should I do that? On the one side this, on the one side that, on the other side that, and then on the third side and the fourth side. You know, like we're like thousand, we, we suddenly manifest a thousand hands. Well, on one side, and then on, another, on one hand, on the other hand, and then on the third hand. Uh, so this, the spiritual master is there. You do this. Question solved. Guru Mukha Padma Bhakya Trutete Master has answered my question now. I just have to do it. I don't have to, to keep guessing. Uh, the spiritual master may not be physically present. Uh, then, or if it, it doesn't seem he's given an instruction on some particular point, what do we do? So then the Shastra is there, the books are there, and the devotees are there. So we saw that Srila Prabhupada even would consult. He would consult. Even if the sadhus were his own disciples, still he would consult. Tamal Krishna, Maharaj, what do you think? Uh, Guru Kripa, what do you think? This one, what do you think? What do you think? He would also take consideration. So we have to do that. Uh, my own intelligence, that's all right. But then there are sadhus, they may be more thoughtful, they may, uh, or they may expose the matter, different sides of the matter, different considerations. Even Krishna, he's sitting in Dwarka Uddhava, what do you think? And he would take advice from the assembly members, and especially Uddhava was the most intimate with Krishna. So in this way, we try to understand uh, carefully. Not that, well, I know what to do uh, when I don't. We can take advice and, and thoughtful, what is that, thoughtful discussion among the devotees to try to understand what is the best way, way to do. And at the same time, we pray to Krishna, we depend on Krishna. Please give us direction and instruction. But it's it's not just pray and go, it's, it's it's in reference to Shastra. So is that okay? Um, yeah, I guess it's okay. Yeah, in theory, well, in theory, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it gets, it can get dicey. Not every decision is easy. And even not every decision is right. Sometimes we make the wrong decision. And then we do, you know, that we're implicated, right? I did something wrong. But even if the devotee does something wrong, because he's a devotee, Krishna helps him. He, he comes back to the right path. A BJ Sudharachara, even if he does something very wrong, Durachar means wrong action. Sudharachar means uh, immensely wrong action. Yeah. Uh, but Padadeya Mahamananya Bhakti sticks firmly to the determination to serve Krishna. Sadhureva Samantha. He has to be considered a sadhu. And Kshipramamati Parma, when he comes quickly back to the right, right path. Yes. If everything else has failed. If everything else has failed. everything else has failed. Could you just chant the name of Krishna? Can you just chant the name of Krishna? Absolutely. Even if everything else has not failed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get it. You, you may very well. Because Krishna means Krishna and his name are, are not different. So if you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're coming in touch with Krishna. Of course, those who are pure devotees, when they chant Hare Krishna, they get a clear, what would you say? They fully appreciate the presence of Krishna. Those of us who are beginners, we appreciate to a greater or lesser extent. But yes, you're exactly right. That when I'm in, in, in perplexity, let me just chant Hare Krishna. And there's, then there's, I have experience of that from my earliest days in Krishna. You just chant Hare Krishna and your perplexity is gone. 
Krishna solves the problem for you, or you're, you realize that it wasn't a problem, only in your mind was it a problem. So if we're always chanting Hare Krishna, practically speaking, we'll never be in difficulty. And even if we're in difficulty, Krishna will help us. Kirtani is Excellent solution. Thank you so much. You're right on target. Yes. Maharaj, this is a question about um, some verses in the Bhagavad Gita. There's innumerable examples, innumerable purports that Prabhupada has written about. What are the qualities that please Krishna? The qualities that please Krishna. And, and specifically, I'm really, uh, thinking about a verse uh, right after Guru Maharaj uh, tries to decimate the yakshas and he gets advice. And there's a verse about. That's a good Shashas. example, by the way. Guru Maharaj thought that he should kill the yakshas to, because they killed his brother. But then he got advice from his spiritual master, senior devotee, so that he came back to the right standard. Yes? So that's just one of many examples throughout the Bhagavatam about what should a devotee do. So mm -hmm. the knowledge is that. But the more I, I read, I'm, I'm more painfully aware about the chasm between where I want to be or where scripture wants us to be and where where we are. Yeah. So how does one go about this without being discouraged? We're directed by scripture, but so we, we know what we're supposed to do, but then we become aware of the, the distance between where we are and where we're supposed to be. So how do we go on without being discouraged? Step by step. The Rupa Goswami, uh, you know, Atyahara, not Atyahara, Utsaha, Nishchayat, Tariya. Well, we carry on with enthusiasm and with confidence that because I'm following the, the right process, certainly, I'll, I'll reach the goal. And Tariyat with patience and determination. Tat Tat Karma Pravartana, performing, following the rules and regulations, doing the things, doing the routine work. It's probably not sometimes. Uh, Sangha Tyaga, giving up bad associations so that I'm not pulled off course by bad, uh, bad company. And Satobrite. To be honest in our occupation or to associate with devotees. Shadir, Kapir, precipitate, then we'll reach perfection. There's a question. There's something more on the chat box. Let's see what's happening. Lord Kapiladev says in Bhagavatam, no one is dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, nor is anyone his enemy or friend. Uh, but he gives inspiration to those who've not forgotten him and destroys those who have. But then in chapter 12, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, lists several types of people who are very dear to him. How should these two different statements be understood? In Bhagavad Gita also, Krishna says, Samoham Sarvabhuteshu, I'm equal to all. Nam me dwe chosti na priha. I'm not anyone's enemy, I'm not anyone's friend. Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya. But if someone engages in my devotional service, someone serves me in, in devotion, I'm in him and he's in me. Uh, the sun is equal to everyone. But if you close your doors, close your windows, then no sun. And if you go out on the beach and uh, bathe in the sunshine, you get the full. So it's not that the sun is friendly to the beachgoers and, and hates the people who stay inside. It's up to them. You, you can stay inside or you can go to the beach. Stay inside, you'll get no sunlight, you'll have vitamin D3 deficiency and all of that. And you go out into the sun, you'll get all the benefit of the sun's rays. So it's not because the sun is partial, but it's up to us. Krishna says, uh, yeah, 
Everyone else, you might want to check your phone and see that it's in silent mode. Um, it's silent mode, here, Ricky. Uh, yeah, so I think that answers that question. Um, just hold on one second. Yes, your question. So there are many rules and regulations in Shastra, right? And uh, like there are things like we should not be left hand, right hand, pass through Shastra, and all that. Uh, you, know, you should remain at home if somebody dies. And so many, very, very instructions in the Shastra about so many things. So how much are we supposed to take those instructions? There's so many instructions in the Shastra Vastu Shastra and this Shastra and that Shastra. Do this with your, don't do this with your left hand. Don't do this with this way. And uh, then, don't go out at this time. And then as Brahmanas, uh, one who is a Brahmana is not supposed to work in a, as a salary for some Brahmanas not to work, to work as a salaried person. So how do we, what do we do with this whole universe full of instructions? Yes, and then we are initiated as Brahmanas, but then we are working at a job. And we're initiated as Brahmanas, but we're working outside. So what do we do? Okay. So first thing is, what is that? Shruti uh, uh There's so many different. Tarko There's so many different instructions from Shastra. Tarko Patishta Shruti Right. So, uh, what should one do? So, Mahajan means especially what the spiritual master has ordered. That's also there in Bhagavatam. Buri, Burini, Karmani, Shotadhyani, Vibhagusha, Tasakotri, Yatsava, Samudritumini, The sages said to Sutta Goswami, My dear Sutta Goswami, there's so many Shastras. With so many directions, puri purini karmani, shotavyami vipagasha. So many ways of looking at things, so many different shastras, so many different directions. Atta, therefore, sahotra yat sadam, samudritya venisha. Please uh, make it easy for us and select the essence of those instructions. Select the essence of those instructions because. To follow every rule and regulation is not possible. Uh, and it's not the point. Srila uh, Prabhupada didn't start an international society for following all the rules and regulations. <laughs> but he selected those that would be important for us. So therefore, it's, it, we're meant to be directed by the spiritual master. I know my god brother Pradumna, he had a, uh, an almanac, Vedic almanac, with full of directions, you know, at, at between four and six on, on this day, it's inauspicious to go east. Before, between two and three, it's inauspicious to go north. To start a new venture in the morning on this day will result in. Shul Prabhupada said, if you go by that, you can't do anything. <laughs> so we have to go by the spiritual masters instructions he selects the essence as far as yes as far as Varnashram goes as, and anyone who's taking a salary can't claim to be a Brahmin. Brahmin is not a salaried person. Uh, Brahmin is not a salaried person. Uh, even a Kshatriya is not a salaried person. Even a Vaishnava is not really a salaried person. He has his own business. The the shudras, they're the ones who are maintained by others. So our, our Brahmin, Brahminical initiation, uh, really it means to be situated in Krishna consciousness, which is above the Brahminical uh, status. Sagunan, Sanati, Chaitan, Brahminical, spiritual doctrine. Otherwise, according to Varnashram, it's a fact. But one may consider that in terms of Barnasha. But finally, the essence is what uh, 
Top bun bir güzel şeyste var aşkına bir dalış yapsınız diye dersi dermesi sanksit iyi hadi koşun. Yesin siz de sabit hay Krishna. Not simply to follow this regulation and that regulation. At the end of the life, we follow all the rules and regulations, and we're nowhere. Um, but if we can satisfy Krishna, our life is successful. Okay. So then, Prabhupada said fifty percent of his work is good. Yeah. So we should. We want to do that. Also, we want to establish Radhashram. We want to live according to these principles. So that we want to do. But we don't want to lose sight of the real thing. There's so much to do to to adjust our way of life according to the principles of Varnasha, and we should try for that. There's, there's a lot. But uh, to go deeper into that in the time remaining is, uh, well, you know, that's another hour. And, and a good hour to spend, but that's... Okay, there's another question here. Abhi Sheikh. Is it okay to do japa, chanting on the beads, based on a fixed time, like two hours, without paying attention to counting? Or is counting 16 rounds a must, as Srila Prabhupada recommended? Sometimes just immersing oneself in chanting without bothering about counting is more pleasurable and satisfying and generally two hours or more than enough to finish 16 rounds. And counting just feels like distraction and mechanical, but it is contrary to Prabhupada's advice of counting the rounds. Please suggest. Yeah, the idea is attractive. Just mark out two hours and, and figure that's pretty likely to be 16 rounds and to immerse yourself but if the spiritual master said chant 16 rounds you want to make sure you've covered that so if you really want to take that that approach i would say all right um if you know that you can figure out that you can you'll infallibly do 16 rounds in two hours then give yourself two and a half to three and then say, okay, I did my 16 rounds. <laughs> you know, so that you know you really did them. But uh, that's rather an ad hoc uh, solution that I'm just coming up with, which really isn't my job. Um, Shri Prabhupada said, chant 16 rounds. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we found that he was chanting, on, we hear from Chaitanya Charitamrita that he was, he was counting on his fingers, so many rounds. Haridas Thakur, who's the Nama Charja, and who certainly wasn't missing the point of becoming immersed and absorbed in chanting the holy name, counted. He had a vow to, count. of course, he was chanting so many. But when these great souls were counting, then we can also count. We can also count. Those who are not initiated, they can do what they like. But those who are initiated by the spiritual master who fixes a certain number of rounds should chant those rounds. Um, not that, well, wouldn't this also be good? Wouldn't that also be good? It might be good, but I have to follow what my spiritual master said. Uh, and then Lakshmi Moni says, Srila Prabhupada did not suggest we chant 16 rounds. He asked us to vow to chant 16 rounds every day. He ordered us to chant at least 16 rounds. So those who are initiated have an obligation. Yes, exactly. It's not a suggestion. Um, Prabhupada didn't suggest four regular principles or 16 rounds. For everyone else, it's a suggestion. For those who've taken initiation, they've vowed to do these things, to follow these principles. So there's no question of, but wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it make more sense? Wouldn't, um, you know, if a cup of tea helps me be Krishna conscious, wouldn't it, you know, be better? No, you, you took a vow, that's it, end of story. 
no intoxicants, no gambling, no beating, no illicit sex, and 16 rounds. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, I promised. Yes. Um, so I have read the book and it's interesting and intriguing to see how you wrote about how you know similar a lot of the people is to the book. I don't have to pronounce it. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Okay. So does the book, the Julian Christian book, Ecclesiastes, does it even on that? Well, it's just so similar where it says life is so meaningless and futile. You haven't read my book, Vanity Karma, but you're intrigued with the idea that there's a similarity between Bhagavad Gita and Ecclesiastes. And does Ecclesiastes um, lay out the, the laws of karma and so on? It seems very similar. It feels very similar. There are, um, of course, the best way to answer that question for you would be to read the book. Uh, okay, yes, show and tell. Thank you so much. This is the book, Vanity Karma, and it's available on Amazon.com and other such outlets. And when you read the book, your questions will all be answered. But for a brief answer, the two books are similar in some ways and different in others. They deal with, they both deal with the apparent uh, despair that they come on when life seems meaningless. Srila Prabhupada points that out in the purport to uh, an early verse of the second chapter where of Bhagavad Gita, where Arjun facing his, his relatives uh, in the, and friends at, on the battlefield. Um, Prabhupada said a person in, in that situation thinks, why am I here? Why, why are these perplexities uh, afflicting me like this. And he, he, he thinks better to, to, to let them kill me even, just stand there unarmed and let them do me in. So it's, there's that similarity that we, we look at life and say it's, it's, it's meaningless, it's senseless. Um, so both that theme is, is very much present in Bhagavad Gita and uh, especially in, in Ecclesiastes. But there are the, the author of Ecclesiastes, as, as I point out in the introduction, is really like a, uh, uh, a, a, a covered Hindu. You know, it's not that like underneath his, his Jewish exterior, there's really a, uh, you know, a Hindu sage who's saying the same thing that the Bhagavad Gita is saying. The Ecclesiastes sometimes says things that are close or, or the same. And sometimes says things that are completely different. So there, and the, the differences and the similarities both invite um, our attention. So I've tried to bring the two books in, into dialogue, as it were, you know, bring them together and say, um, what are we saying here? Uh, where do we find differences that, or where do we find similarities that, that enlighten us? And where do we find differences that, enlighten us and how do we resolve those those differences or, or what do we do with this question where where things are presented so so differently i can say just as a as, as one point in the in the for the speaker of, of Kohelet or ecclesiastes um, there doesn't seem to be well the law of karma is very much in his mind actually although he doesn't speak it that way but he, he expects that there ought to be some, some law by which the, the good get their rewards and the, the bad get their punishment. And he sees that it doesn't happen. That sometimes the bad come up on top and the, and the good people will get trod, trodden down. So that, you know, that perplexes him. Why does that happen? And he doesn't have a, so he thinks there ought to be a universal law of karma, but then he sees that the parent laws get violated. 
So there's there's much to be um, added, I would say, from the Bhagavad Gita to the the speaker's uh, understanding. Uh, and there's much that we can prop, profit from what he does understand. There, the points that are similar are, he expresses eloquently and deeply. So both both aspects, uh, the similarities and the differences are, are profitable for us to, to look at. Okay. Um, now, two things are happening. Um, more hands are being raised. And we've reached 801, which is the official end of our online class. So what I'm going to do with your all permission, um, and uh, yes, what I'm going to do by your permission is end our online class. And still I'm here physically, uh, when I close the lid, I, I don't cease to exist. <laughs> and so, so I can answer some more questions. Okay. Uh, so first, let me goodbye, big farewell to all of our uh, friends and colleagues and uh, respected devotees on Zoom. And then we'll carry on. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna.